Hello, I'm Michael Elliott. And our next guest is Noble Ackerson, CEO of LinksFit. LinksFit is currently the number one third-party publisher of Google Glass. Welcome, Noble. Glad to be here. So, Noble, tell us a little bit about your company. Uh, so, we recognize that uh, wearable devices um, help with fitness mm -hmm. quite a bit in their unique uh, uh, use case. However, currently, in the fitness perspective, they're only tracking, running, walking, and perhaps sleeping. Uh, that's not fitness to us. Uh, so we decided to cr uh, create a solution to empower uh, exercise content creators to leverage the 500 million plus wearable, you know, head-mounted and wrist-worn devices out there. Um, so it's a content publishing mm -hmm. platform for wearables. So how do wearables relate to the Internet of Things, and how is your company really involved in IoT? So that's a very, very good question. So IoT is a, such a broad category. Um, and from my viewpoint, uh, an Internet-connected thing uh, that's either on my body or around me mm -hmm. uh, does definitely uh, uh, fall under that moniker. Um, we look at the, IO, the broader IoT category as um, you know, an essential ecosystem to having you know, our biometric and our motion while we're going through whatever fitness activities mm -hmm. we're doing. Uh, we want that to that to communicate uh, with, um, you know, other things that, that may give us a little bit more data or visualize, uh, give us more information uh, to help us uh, perform better. So who would you like to do business with then? Uh, yeah, so in our uh, uh, space, we uh, specifically target um, trainers, fitness okay. trainers and, and gyms and the like. Uh, luckily for us, the industry is moving towards uh, having connected gyms as well. Uh, so you have, <laughs> so you have, you know, you know, rehab machines or, uh, you know, bench press machines or Nordic tracks that are all internet connected at this point. Uh, one thing that is missing though is, uh, um, getting motion information is a little bit more, um, accurate when the, the track or the sensor is on the person, is on right. the body. Mm -hmm. Uh, so having that talk to you know, the stepping machine mm -hmm. or, or what, what have you, uh, and being able to understand how the person is moving um, gives you a little bit more context, gives your trainer a little bit more information as to how to get you to improve. To start to really look at right. the type of exercises right. you're doing, or more importantly, not doing. Exactly. Okay. I'll give you a specific example. Yeah. Uh, if I'm on, a, you know, on a, in a spin class, for example, and I'm, you know, organizing this spin class with my audience, I'm the trainer. Uh, I'm able, with our solution, uh, to get information as to who's slacking. It's a dark class, as you probably know. It's, right. they, they turn, they turn up the heat. I wonder heat. what's going on in this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and you know, this trainer is sort of barking orders out. He or she is able to now get information as to who to help or focus on and help more. You know, the, the, they're able to create the content, like, you know, stand up after 30 seconds, sit down after 30 seconds, and using the accelerometer that is available in most smartwatches mm -hmm. today, uh, the uh, gyroscope that is available in most head-mounted displays today. Uh, you are able to then know that when I bark the order, you know, now stand and spin. A hundred or ninety percent of the class stood and kept on riding, but that one, <laughs> that one ten percent, really kept uh, sitting down and started slowing down. So let's help those guys. Right, yeah. right. So where do you see the wearables market for Internet of Things headed in two thousand fifteen? Um, in t in the short term, two thousand fifteen. Unfortunately, um, I my personal opinion is that we're. Uh, the infrastructure is very fragmented, meaning there are certain protocols and, and networks and, and underlying uh, topology that hasn't really found a common standard. There are multiple standards competing. There are going to be major players mm -hmm. uh, entering the foray, um, Apple with, with HomeKit and HealthKit, and uh, HomeKit being for the IoT on the um, you know, connected life. Uh, uh, type of category right, yeah. and health kit on the connected wearable kind of category. Every one of these manufacturers are playing in their own ecosystems. Um, and there isn't, at least in the short term, I don't foresee 
uh, a common solution that helps the individual to play across the different ecosystems. Okay. And that's going to be a problem, uh, in, in my opinion. So final question for you, and, and why around the Internet of Things, is that such an important technology trend going forward? I believe so. I believe, despite the draw the drawbacks that we currently uh, that we currently have, it's very important because as um, humans we we want information now. We want information to help us be Great safer. Point, yeah. uh, um, uh, it, it's sort of an inherent feature, and uh, and having the power and the vast access to you know the internet uh, and be able to quantify certain bits of information and you know having that talk to things around us right. uh, uh, makes for uh, probably a, a, a enriches our lives and enriches what people can do as they interact with right. us as well. I can sort of walk uh, in our case I can walk into a gym and I you know it knows that I'm about to check in into the you know the powerlifting area or the cardio area and it knows that I'm there if I want to opt into that you know device it, it knows what I can do and mm -hmm. and our our future is to help use the data out of um, uh, you know out of all of these things around us and on us uh, to better coach you and and, and help you uh, perform at your best excellent well no well thank you very much for joining us today we greatly appreciate your time glad to be here and thank you for the opportunity mm -hmm.